mothers and fathers in this place, in this murder mill. I want to start out by saying that we are not mad at you, we do not hate you. I want to say also, we are here on the behalf of these babies. We are here as Christians because God calls us as Christians to come and speak for the babies that cannot speak for themselves. We are here to speak up for those that cannot speak for themselves. We are also here to share the gospel with you. We are here too because the Bible calls us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So you see, we consider your baby our neighbors as Christians. We consider you our neighbors. We also consider you our neighbors too. And so that's why we are here. We are not here because we are mad or we are angry. We are simply here to share the gospel with you. We want to see you come to, to not murder your child. We want to see you to come to know Christ. We do not want to see you stand before God. And, and we do not want to see you separated from Christ. In Romans 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned. And all have fallen short of the glory of God. So you see, all men have fallen short of the glory of God, glory of God, including me and my brothers on this sidewalk. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. You see, we've all sinned, and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. That is why we need a Savior, because we all have sinned. You see, you may say that you do not have sin. But you know, I don't have to tell you that it's wrong to lie. I don't have to tell you that it's wrong to steal. I don't have to tell you it's wrong to murder someone. You know it's wrong. The, the God's written the law in your heart. He's given you a conscience. So you know these things are wrong. I don't have to tell you that. You already know. So you see... The reason, the reason we need a Savior is we broke God's law. As I showed you, that you've lied, you've stolen, you committed adultery. So you have sinned. And you telling yourself that you haven't sinned is justifying your sin. The Bible says that we oppress the truth with unrighteousness. We say in America that it is okay to murder children in a place like this. We say it's okay to murder children in Planned Parenthood, but it is not okay for someone to hit a woman in the womb and kill that baby. Then we go to prison. They consider it a baby then, but when the mother decides that she does not want the child, we do not consider it a baby. We consider it a clump of cells. But you see, the Bible says that the life is in the blood. And it also says that God knit that baby together in its mother's womb and it was perfectly and wonderfully made. And how we have the right to say that we have a right to take his life, the only one that has a right to take his life is God. I know that every one of you in here value life. You may ask, how, well, how do I know that? Well, I've watched every one of you go in here with a mask. So I know you value your own life. So how do you not value your baby's life? How do you not value an innocent child that God has given you that's never sinned in word, deed, or thought? That's never sinned at all in the womb? You see, the difference in you and the baby is you have sinned. The baby hasn't. The baby's perfect in the womb. When it comes out, it will no longer be perfect. It will be a sinner just like you and me. But you see... There's hope and there's forgiveness today in Christ. And you can have that today. But you may say, well, I'm already a Christian because I went to church and I went to the altar and I prayed a prayer. Or the pastor told me that I was saved because I prayed a prayer. That is wrong. You cannot pray a prayer and be saved. You may think that you're a Christian because you're a Catholic or you trust all of or you're a Mormon. But that's not Christianity. That is a cult. That is. 
Catholics pray to Mother Mary, their God is Mary. You see, the God that we worship as Christians is the God of the Bible that created the universe. You see, the Bible says in Genesis, in the first, in the first chapter of Genesis, it says that God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. To be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. But in America, we come to places like this is because of two issues. Because of women's health rights, or women's, saying that women have the right to murder their child, or the, the woman wants to get a job. You see, I'm not saying that women are any less than men, but this is what I'm saying. God... As I was saying, God gives men and women roles, and God has given men and women roles. You see, God has called women to have children, to take care of children, to bear children, to homeschool children. You see, God has given men a role also. God has given a man the role of protecting his wife and his child. He's given them the, the he's given them the role to protect and provide and to give his wife spiritual counseling. You see, he's given us responsible as responsible as men, he's given us that responsibility. Sir, you're sitting in your car being a coward. You're hiding behind your door as a doctor is violating your wife today. She is violating your wife. And crushing your baby's skull today and pulling it out. You see, you're not being a man as God has called you to do is to protect your woman and your child. You see, if someone would rob you today and shoot your wife or shoot another family member of yours, you would you would probably protect them, or I hope you would. I would hope that you would protect them with your own life. You see? But you're You've hired a doctor to take out your child today. You see? You've hired a doctor to take... You've hired a... Hit. I would not consider him a doctor because doctors do not take life. They survive life. They help life live. So I would consider him... God consider him that this doctor a murderer. And that's what I'm going to say. He is a murderer today and he's going to stand before God. And sir, the Bible says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. You're going to be held, on the day of judgment, you're going to be held just accountable as the doctor. Do you realize that your baby's blood is crying out from the ground to God? You see, Cain killed Abel, and God said, what have you done? What have you done? Your, 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 your brother's blood cries out to the ground to me. What do you think? That your baby's blood is his, your baby's blood the same way is crying out to God. Your baby's blood is crying to God. Have justice. Have mercy on me. And it's asking God to have justice on you. So you see, your baby's blood is crying to God and asking Him to have justice on you. And He will have His day. You will have your baby's blood will your baby will have justice on you. Because God is going to have justice for you murdering your child today. You see, I'm not saying that women cannot do things that men do. But that is not the way. I'm not saying they're any less than men, I should say. No, they're not. They're made in the image of God, the same as a man. But there's different roles that God has given men and women. You see, I am not able to have a baby. God has not given me that ability to have a baby. Today, the same as God gave that woman the ability to have a baby, He's not given me that ability. He's given her that. And that's a blessing. You see, we say homosexuality is okay, but can a man and a man have a baby? Absolutely not. You see, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You see, He didn't He didn't create a man to have a child. He created a woman to have a child. So in America, we say that. 
I don't, I want to have a job, I want to have an education, but you see, God did not create women to do that. He created them to stay home and be mothers of a child. And you're not any less than a man. But he's also created a man to provide and to protect and take care of his child. That's what he's provided a man to do. That's the roles that God has given us. And you may say I'm a sexual pig for that, and that's okay. But I'm not going to stop telling you that because it's what the Bible says. You may think that I'm a terrible person because I say that a woman has a woman should stay home and have a baby. That's okay. You can think that. But you see, that is the way God set it up. He did not set it up for a man to be with a man or a woman to be with a woman. No. God set it up for Adam and Eve, male and female. And the reason that you come to places to murder your child is because of two issues. Pride, one. And the other thing is that you want the things that you want. You're not willing to give up your fancy car or your fancy TV. And you may say, well, I'm not here to murder my child today. I am here for birth control. Well, I will let you know that birth control is a form of murder. Also, you may say that I'm not here for any of that. I'm not here for birth control. I'm not here to murder my child. I'm here. I need a women's exam or I need a pregnancy test. Or I need, I need whatever. You see, what you don't understand is you're giving your money to a place that murders children. You may say, well, it's not my money. It's my insurance. You see, everything that we have is given to us by God. We do not have anything that is not given to us by God. You see, the car that you came in here today with was given to you by God. Yes, you went and got a job and made the money to give it to you to, to buy that car. But you see, God gave you that job. God gave you the money to go. To, he gave you that job and then He gave you the money to go buy the car that you came in here today to murder your child with. He's given you the house that you live in. He's given you... The breath that you take every single day. He's given you everything that you have. There's not a single thing that God has not given you that you, that you have. Ma'am, would you have mercy on your child today? Would you come and talk with us and let us help you? You don't have to come here. I don't know why you're here. If you're here for pregnancy tests, whatever you're here for, if you're here to murder a child. But there's a better, there's another place you can go that will do it for free. Well, you don't have to come to a place where they murder children. You don't have to support a murderer. Ma'am, I'm asking you to have mercy today. The Bible says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. Ma'am, you're going to stand before God and you're going to answer for giving your money to a place that murders children. If you're not here to murder a child, you're going to stand before God and you're going to answer for giving the money that God has given you to support this place. And you have supported this place by giving them money. You've allowed, you've said that murder is okay. So I'm asking you to repent and walk away from this place and never return. Not keep that appointment that you made. I seen you come out with a piece of paper, so I'm assuming you made an appointment here today. I ask that you go somewhere else. We will give you what you need to go somewhere else. We'll give you the information for Hope Resource Center if you want to go there. Man, if you if you are pregnant and you don't you can't afford to take care of your child, we will adopt your child. There's many men and women in America that want to have children, and God has not blessed them to have children. You see? So please have mercy on your child today. I'm asking you to have mercy as God has had mercy on you today. He has had mercy because He's allowed you to come to a place of murder. He's given you Please have mercy today, ma'am. Turn away. How you doing, man? As I was saying, you may say that this place does more things than murder. But as I said, you're giving your resources that God has given you to a place that murders child, children. They're made in the image of God. Do you realize that these places were set up to get rid of black people. And black people were not any less than me and you. 
or black people, not any less than white people, they are still made in the image of God. So see, I am not saying that they are any less, but the person that created this place, Planned Parenthood and places like this, set them up to get rid of black people. If you don't believe me, you can go watch a movie called Mafia, Mafia 21. Go watch that movie. You see, we are not angry with you. That is why we are not angry with you. We truly do care about you and we do love you and care for your child. You may say, well, I don't have the money to take care of my child because I'm going to school. Or I don't have a job. You see, there's two things that I'll tell you. One, God has sent us out here to share the resources that we can give you. As I said earlier, we will give you, we'll take you to a Hope Resource Center and we'll give you a free pregnancy test, a free women's exam, a free ultrasound. And if you want to keep your child, we will take care of your child until your child is 18, if that's what we have to do. You see, if you don't want your child, then we will adopt your child. There's many men and women in America that God has not given them a child. They want to have a child. You see, a lot of, I, hear, I hear from people all the time. Then why don't they just have sex? This is what I'll tell you. You did not get pregnant because you had sex. No, yes, God is a God of means. And He uses sex for a way for women to get pregnant. But you see, the only reason that you are pregnant is because God put that child in your womb. He opened your womb to have the child. You see, God doesn't do that for everybody. And I don't know why. God is just in everything that He does. So I'm asking you today to turn away from this place. As I said earlier, you may say, well, I don't have the money to support my child. There's a Bible verse I want to lead you to today. It's Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added unto you. You see? It's not saying He will give us what we want. He will give us what we need. He will not give us what we want. You see? But there is hope and there is forgiveness today in Christ. I will tell you how there is hope and forgiveness in Christ today. If I can't pray a prayer and I can't be saved by being a Catholic, well, how do I become saved? I will share that with you today. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, sent His Son to live a perfect life. He sent His Son to die on a cross. You see, His Son was whipped and spit on and beat and he had a crown of thorns on his head he had to take our sin on his behalf so we not perish and live totally separate from Christ you see as I said that Jesus Christ fully God or truly God truly man sent his son to live a perfect life to mean you cannot live you see we cannot live that we cannot live as perfect as Christ did you see God never sinned in word, deed, or thought. He never sinned at any point. And then He died on the cross and He died. And they put Him in a tomb. And three days later He rose from the dead. And now He sits upon the right hand of the Father. He sits upon the right hand of the Father. You see, that is what Christ did for us. And we didn't deserve it. Honestly, you want to know what we deserve? We deserve right now to drop down and die and go to hell. We deserve that. That's what we deserve. But Christ died for us to pay for our sin debt. He did not deserve. He left a perfect heaven to come to earth to bear our sin. That's what He did for us. You see? A lot of people know that verse John 3.16, For God so loved the world, for whoever shall believe in him, whoever shall believe in him 
should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, the Bible in, one, in Mark 1, 15, it says repent and believe the gospel. It says repent. That is the commandment that God has given us to repent and turn away from our sin. You so, you may say, well, I go to church on Easter. Or I go to church on a holiday. Is that not good enough? No, it's not. You see, we don't go to, we don't go to church because it saves us. We go to church because we are saved and we want to obey God. And God says to keep the Sabbath day holy. You see? Ma'am, can we help you today? Can we talk with you? We do not go to a place today and help murder innocent children that are made in the image of God. Ma'am, the Bible says that God hates the hands to shed innocent blood. But there is hope and there is forgiveness in Christ at this moment. You can have that today. We can help you find another job. You can't tell me that you can't find another job in Knoxville because there's places higher and everywhere. You can't tell me that. Man, why do you value your own life and not a child's life? Why? You can't tell me you don't value life because I see that you value life because you're putting a mask on. You're wearing a mask to save your own life. But that mask is not going to save you on the day of judgment. The only thing that is going to save you is in Christ. It's by your repenting and turning away from this place. That's the only thing that will save you, not a mask. And if you die, you get sick and die, what would be the worst if you're a Christian? Ma'am, you're not guaranteed. Guys, we're not guaranteed to go home tonight. You can stand before God at any moment. You can stand before God. You can get in a car accident. Please repent, ma'am. You can stand before God at this moment. You're not guaranteed to go home today. What are you going to say to God when you stand before Him and you have to answer for every lie you've ever said, for everything that you've ever stolen? What are you going to say to God when you have to answer for everything that you've ever done? What are you going to say? Well, I thought I was helping women. I thought I was helping women so they wouldn't die themselves. This is what I would tell you. That if you die having a baby, then God is sovereign over that and He allowed you to die. You see, you're taking your own life in your own hands. But do you realize what they're going to do in that back room to your baby today? Do you know what they're going to do? They're going to take a forceps and they're going to crush. First of all, they're going to violate your wife. And then they're going to crush the baby's skull with the forceps. And they're going to pull its head off. And then they're going to take a vacuum cleaner and suck your baby's arms off, limb from limb. And then they're going to take your baby and they're going to put it on a table. And they're going to put it back together like a jigsaw puzzle to make sure they get every little piece out of your wife's womb. And then they're going to turn around and they're going to sell your precious baby that they made in the image of God for profit. See, they're going to make money off you twice in one day. First, they're going to charge you for having the abortion. Second of all, they're going to charge you for, they're going to sell your baby and make money again. How disgusting when we say it's okay to murder a child, but if I would go shoot a school up, I'd be in prison today. You see, would you, if you went to a grocery store and they put a sign up, you know, if you buy groceries here, but before you can leave, you have to be raped. If, if would you give your, would you go to that store and give your money to a place like that? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't give your money to a place that wanted to rape you. You wouldn't do that. So why would you give your money to a place that murders children? Why wouldn't you stand up, man, sir, and be a man and protect the woman that is in there that is murdering her child? Your your child. One day you're going to go to a wedding or a graduation, and you're going to look at somebody else, you may go to a friend's graduation or a friend's wedding, 
of their son or daughter. And they're going to see, you're going to be like, that could have been my child. But instead, I wanted everything that I wanted. So I chose to murder my child. Because I wanted the things that I wanted of the world. I wanted everything that I wanted. I wanted my lustful desires that it was not going to fill me anyways. I wanted the things that are going to perish and, and, and the day is going to perish in the end of the world anyways. You see, the things that we have, our cars, our houses, they're going to rot away. They're not going to matter. You're, you're schooling that, you, you, that you're wanting to go get so you're murdering your child so you can have a schooling. It's not going to matter anyways. It's not going to matter when you die. It's not going to matter. So why should we go and spend the money on all this stuff? You see, the Bible says He calls us to honor our parents. So if you are here, you are not honoring your parents. You are dishonoring your mother and your father. You see, because your mom and dad allowed you to live. They didn't kill you. Good morning, guys. They didn't murder you. Instead, you're murdering your child that is your child. It's also your parents' grandchild. You see, you're dishonoring them. You're not honoring them. So I'm asking you today to have mercy on your child. I'm asking you to repent and walk away from this place. You see, a lot of people tell me, well, I can be a Christian and still murder my child. But you see, that's not true. Because when we become Christians, God takes our heart of stone and gives us the heart of flesh. And we no longer want to lie. We no longer want to steal. We no longer want to bring our babies to a place of death, a place of murder. We want to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. See, we want to do these things. We want to go to church. You see, that's what happens when we become a Christian. He takes our heart of stone and gives us the heart of flesh. And we do not, not say we're perfect because we will not be perfect. Even as Christians, we still sin. But you see, the difference in me and you is you live an unrepented sin. You see, God cannot live where there is darkness. Light cannot be where there is darkness. So you cannot come to a place and murder your child and still be a Christian. You cannot have a good conscience by coming here. And still be a Christian and have a conscience saying this is okay. So I'm asking you to have mercy today. I'm asking you to walk away from this place and repent from your sins. Because I told you earlier, you're not, you're not guaranteed to go home today. You can stand before God in five minutes, in two seconds from now, you can have a heart attack in your truck, sir. I, I pray to God it doesn't happen to you. I pray you have a chance to repent from your sins. But like I said, you're not guaranteed to come out of your truck. So I'm asking you to repent from this and walk away. And go get your wife and your child. And be a man. Don't be a coward. To be a man and protect your wife and child today. And have mercy. Please. As I said, none of us are mad at you. None of us hate you. We all care about you. We truly do. That is why we're out here in the heat today. If I didn't care, I wouldn't be here. Do you think I want to be here? I want to be here to share the gospel with you, but I don't want to see you murder your child. I want you to have mercy today. Please, I am begging you. To have mercy today on your child. Before it's too late. We say in America that we are a Christian country. But I want to let you know. 
that in America we say that, but we are far from a Christian country when we say it's legalized to murder a person. You see? You see, we, we say it's okay to murder these children here, but it's not okay for someone to murder a, another person. What, what, how the corrupt is our justice system? How to corrupt our man? We say it's okay to murder one person, but it's not okay to murder another. You see, also in America, we take dogs and we make them like people. You see, we push our dogs in a stroller down a road. We put our dogs in a baby carrier. We carry our dogs on our chest. And we murder, then we, but then we say that we, that we're a mom dog, we're, we're a mom to a dog. I'd be ashamed of myself to say that. You do have sex with a dog? That's pretty disgusting. You see, dogs, God created animals to eat. As much as I don't want to eat a dog, but if I had to, I would. You see, we, we, have, we have made dogs people, but we made people okay to murder. Why? Why have we done that? When God says to eat animals. God didn't tell us to kill people. See, he says that pe killing people is murder. But if I would kill a dog, I would have a criminal record and I'd be put in prison for that. How sad. But we don't criminalize people for killing children. How sad. Karen, I ask you today, today is a day for you to walk away from this place. Today is a day to repent and turn from your sin. To return from, from a child to murdering children today. Today is a day of salvation. You can have that today. You see? You may, you may say that you're helping women, but I have been here so many times. You've heard the gospel so many times. Me and my dad have preached the gospel to you. So many other people have preached the gospel to you. Ma'am, can we help you today? Would you, would you talk with us? Would you let us help you? We care about you. We're not angry with you. Go ahead, Dad. Why do you wear that mask? Why do you value your own life but not a child's? Why? Why do you value your own life? Why can't we value children's lives, a baby's life? Why can't you have mercy today? Sir, are you a heartless person that you don't care about a child? Are you really that heartless? You see, we care about you. We truly do. Do you really think that these doctors care about you? All they want is a paycheck from you. They're not going to call you tomorrow and ask how your wife is doing after she murders a child. But you see, if you let us help you, somebody would be calling you and checking on you and seeing how you're doing. You see, we would care for you. We would we'd walk beside you with your child. We would adopt your child, sir. We would, if you want to keep your child, as long as you want to keep your child alive, we will help you. We will adopt your child. We will, if you want to keep it, if you can't afford to take care of it, we will walk beside you and help you. Give me the resources, the, the money to take care of the child. We would do that for you. As long as you want to let your child live. There's other places to go. The Hope Resource Center is one that you can go to right now. You get a free pregnancy test and a free women's exam. A free ultrasound. You see, you have today, you have no excuses today to go ahead and murder your child. Because I've given you so many options not to murder your child. I've given you so many things saying that murder's wrong. You see, in Exodus 20, the Bible says, 
Thou shalt not murder. And this is murder. This is child sacrifice. This is child sacrifice. So please, I am begging you to stand up and do what God has called you as a man and to protect your child and your wife or your girlfriend. I don't know how she got pregnant. If she got pregnant by incest or rape or if she got pregnant because you had sex and outside of marriage or if you're married, I don't know. But I do know, what I do know is the only thing that is good out of those three incidents is Either you had sex outside of marriage or incest or rape. Those are terrible things. Incest and rape is terrible and it's a sin. Having sex outside of marriage is a sin. Absolutely. I'm not going to disagree with you on that one bit. This is what I'll tell you though. The only thing that came good out of that is that child that God has given you. Your offspring. Your, your child that God has given you. That is the only thing that good came out of that whole thing. You see, you've hired an assassin to take out your child. And right now, you stand before, right now, in God's eyes, you are a murderer. The same as these doctors and these nurses. That blood is on your hands. Your baby's blood is on your hands. And you will answer for that. You will answer for your child to be murdered today. You're going to remember this day for the rest of your life that I murdered my child on May 18th. You're going to remember that, that I murdered my child. Every year, even when you stand before God, you're going to remember that we came out here and tried to offer you hope and forgiveness. We, we've offered you the gospel. You're going to answer for that. You're going to remember that. You see, you can have the hope and the forgiveness that I have today. If you repent and turn away and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and know that nothing else can save you, but the blood of Christ is the only thing that can save you. You can have that today. So I'm asking you that you turn from your sins. Ma'am, why are you here still? Why are you come to a place? Ma'am, that does not bother me. Ma'am, that just that does not there's nothing to me. That's just showing me your IQ level. It's worse than a two-year-old. But I want to let you know that I still love you and I still care about you even if you just flip me off. I'm not angry with you because you flipped me off. I'm not angry with you. But I still love you and I still care. And I still want you to, to come to see. I still want you to come to know Christ. I still want to see you not stand before God and answer for giving me that middle finger or murdering your child or your grandchild today. I do not want to see you do that. I want to see you repent and turn away. And I'm asking you to do that today. Okay. Guys, we... We'll be leaving here soon. I'm not sure when. We will be leaving here soon. But you have an opportunity to come and talk with us. You have an opportunity today to repent from your sins. You have an opportunity. God has given you a chance to do that today. He's given you that chance. And He has. You see, it's not an accident that we are here. It's not a coincidence. We are here because God placed every one of us on this sidewalk today. And it's not an accident that you're here. You're here because God allowed you to come here, but for the purpose of us sharing the gospel with you. 
So I'm asking you to repent. Another one of my brothers is fixing to get up to preach. And I ask that you listen to him and that you think about what he says. As me and my dad has already preached, I ask that you think about what we've already said. Before you stand before God, I ask that you think about those things. Please. Thank you guys for listening.